Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today I'm gonna make this gun really big. I've always loved Transformers and since I was a kid, my favorite one was Optimus Prime. For a long time, I've wanted to make his ion cannon as a really big prop and I started to make this one, but it doesn't have quite enough detail. So I got out this version of the toy and I like this one a lot better. I originally wanted to make it life-size, but I did a little bit of research and found out that that would be eight feet long, so we're gonna go 50%. Let's do it. My original idea was taking measurements of the toy and then translating them up so that I could make the structure out of PVC, wood, and EVA foam. Ran into a little problem. The further I went on this, the less happy I was with it for several different reasons. One, the scale was getting off on every piece that I added. The transitions weren't sharp enough, they had too much curve, and I could just see myself spending a whole lot of time just to try to get it to look right. I think I just started the wrong direction, so we're gonna completely change gears. We're still gonna start with a piece of PVC pipe as the core, but instead we're gonna add some 3D printing. So the first step in that is modeling the original. I laid the toy out on a cutting mat right next to a ruler and then took a photo from directly above. I brought this into Fusion and then used it to create the outline profile for the gun. I made the profile for all the cylinder shapes and then used the revolve tool to turn them into cylinders. For the other pieces that weren't cylinders, I drew out the profile for them and used the extrude tool to pull them out to the right thickness. I also added some chamfers and different details to them and started working on the model piece by piece. Since the printing takes a long time, I started printing one piece while I went back to model the next piece. After I got the first piece printed, I tried to smooth out the print lines using a product called XTC3D. Basically, it's an epoxy that you paint on and it smooths out the surface. It did work all right and I think would be fine for small things, but given the sheer amount of surface area that I have to cover, I didn't end up using it anymore. A whole lot of these pieces were just big cylinders, but they did have to have some support material in them for certain little details. And some of the pieces were modeled to fit on the PVC pipe. But in this case, that surface where there was support material was really rough. So I put some sandpaper on the PVC and sanded off the underside. And speaking of PVC, I cut down two sections to match some of the cylinders in the model. I had used this four inch pipe as kind of my guide for the sizing of everything else. To put these pieces together, I cleaned off the burrs on the end of these cuts with some sandpaper, and then after doing some test fits, used some super glue to attach these pieces together. And while I was assembling these pieces, I had more pieces on the printer being finished up. Every time one of those finished, I would add it on with some glue. I used CA glue for most of this and used activator on some pieces so that they would join up even faster. Already I'm way happier with how this thing's turning out. And when I look at the first version of this, I can already see that the scale was gonna be completely off. These are too big around. I'm just really glad that I stopped and moved on to something else. And I mean, I got a lot left to go, but look how cool that is. But of course, not every piece printed perfectly. There were some gaps that needed to be filled and the gaps in between the print and the PVC. To fill these in, I used some glazing spot putty. It's Bondo that dries pretty quickly and is super easy to sand. This putty is really awesome to use. It's way more forgiving than using Bondo because you don't have to mix it. You have a shorter dry time and it's just a lot easier to sand when it is finally hardened. There were even some connections that were a little tighter than they should have been. Luckily, a heat gun to some PVC will soften it up just enough to be able to fit pieces together. My process for finishing 3D printed parts is about the same in every project. I use some body filler to fill in the gaps and the transitions between pieces and let that dry. Then I'll sand it down and cover everything with a couple of coats of filler primer. This fills in more of the print layers and builds up the outer surface. It also shows you the places that you still need to sand. And like I said before, while I was doing this work, the printers were still working in the other room. And then eventually that primer dried and it was ready for some sanding. 
Typically, my 3D printed parts will go through two or three versions of this exact same process. It's pretty time consuming, but ends up with some really nice smooth surfaces. Then while that was drying, I went back to modeling the rest of the gun. While the primer is drying on the front half of the gun, it's time to start putting together the back half of the gun, and I got all of these gigantic pieces printed, and there are a few problems. Like for instance, on this one, there's supposed to be a little groove here, and apparently I made that wall a little too thin, and it printed nothing. So now I've got a gap here and on the other side, but all I have to do to fix that is put something on the back side of it. I'm just gonna put in a piece of foam just to fill that. But the bigger issue was that I actually put on a couple of pieces incorrectly, and had to cut them back off and reprint them. So now I have a new piece that fits on here, but I don't have a really good way to put those together. So I printed a little adapter ring that will fit on the inside of this one and on the inside of the other one. And then I've got another ring that will attach this end to this really big piece. So now I've just got to epoxy it all together. I used some two millimeter craft foam to fill these gaps, but really you could use anything. Foam does take paint pretty well and it's super easy to work with. I attached it using some spray adhesive on the back side of it. Super glue probably would have worked to attach these pieces as well, but I wanted to make sure that they did not come apart. So I mixed up some five minute epoxy, it's a two part one to one mixture, and then put it on all of the different pieces. Notice I did have some tick marks here to make sure that things lined up once I got it all put together. There are some details that have to line up front to back. And some of these rings were printed on different printers, so they didn't quite fit perfectly together. I used a file and some sandpaper to smooth over the edges to make sure that the pieces would mate like they should. The cylinders held themselves in place just fine while the epoxy dried, but some of these fins needed a little bit extra support. Blue tape is a great temporary clamp for things like this. I've decided to put some electronics in this thing just to make it a little bit more fun. Basically, it's going to be two buttons. One just plays some sound effects, one plays sound effects and flashes some LEDs. And I'm working on this now to make sure that I have a place to put it all in the gun before I assemble the gun completely. Now for the electronics, there's basically five pieces, maybe six if you count the battery. I'm gonna use this power bank here. It puts out five volts through USB and it will run directly into the Arduino Nano that I'm gonna use. And that Nano is gonna control all of the LEDs and trigger all the sound effects on an Adafruit soundboard. This soundboard is really easy to use. I've used it in the past and all this stuff will be linked down in the description as well if you wanna check it out. That soundboard has an audio file for each one of the pins. And so when you set ground to one of those pins, it triggers the sound effect. The output of that soundboard goes to a small amplifier which then sends it out to a speaker and that's how you get your sounds. The only other component here is a short strip of RGB LEDs. And then of course there's the two buttons that trigger both of these things. Right now I've got all those pieces prototyped on the breadboard and it looks messy because there are jumper wires, but it will look a lot cleaner once it gets put on the perf board. I also wrote some really simple code using stuff that I found in other places and compiled it together. Basically it's two button presses, one triggers sound effects, one triggers sound effects and LEDs. The code and a list of all the things that I'm using for this will be listed down in the description if you wanna check it out and build something like this for yourself. In fact, this little electronic setup would work in tons and tons of different props and could be modified very, very easily. It's kinda of hard to see, but there are two buttons right in there. One of them just alternates between two different sound effects. And the other one alternates between two blaster sounds, but three different lighting effects. This video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club, and I know that's a little bit ironic because I have a beard, but I actually have used them for quite a while. 
Before I had a beard, I used Dollar Shave Club to shave, and now I just use it to trim up around the bottom. But the best thing is they don't just sell razors, they actually sell a bunch of stuff, and you can try a lot of it out in this trial kit. They've got three of their best-selling items in trial sizes. They've got body wash, shave butter, and one wipe Charlies. It also comes with the razor and a set of blades, so you get to try all this stuff out for five bucks with free shipping. And once you pick the stuff that you like, you can subscribe for just a few bucks a month. It's really good quality stuff. Definitely go check it out. Go to dollarshaveclub.com slash make. Five bucks gets you the trial kit. Go check them out. A lot of the pieces that came off the printer didn't need any body work, they just needed some primer. So I would prime pieces or sand pieces, whatever I needed to do on one piece while another piece was finishing up on a printer. The butt of the gun is a really big piece and it didn't need to be full of infill. So I just made a thick wall and cut it into several pieces. I used some super glue and clamps to assemble each side before putting both sides together to make one big box. The side panels were made as separate pieces so that they could be printed separately so it would take less time, but also so they could be removable. I used some more epoxy to attach all of these pieces together and again, use lots of tape to hold them in place, which got a little bit tricky with some of these pieces. Did I mention that there's sanding involved in doing projects like this? Well, there's a lot of sanding and a lot of priming. Every one of these pieces has to have all of these processes. But while these were finishing up, I did finish the final model and I'm super happy with how that model turned out. I'm not planning on releasing this model, but I do encourage you to try your best to model the things that you wanna make. It's a really good learning experience and I learned a whole lot from doing this one. It's kind of funny putting all these pieces together. They're all crazy colors and they don't look good together. And then the Bondo adds another layer to it. But as soon as you start putting on primer, you start to see one piece instead of multiple pieces. That's when it gets really exciting. I wasn't entirely sure if I was gonna do the electronics at the very beginning, so I didn't really build them into the model. But now that I have this all assembled, I'm trying to figure out where to put them. The original thought was to put them back in this back section, so I made it hollow and made it so the panels could come off. I was gonna feed the wires through here all the way to the front of the gun. But the more I thought about it, there was really no reason to have it go that entire distance. So now I'm gonna put all the electronics in the front section and not glue these together, but just make it so I can open and close this piece to change out the battery. And by moving everything up here, it doesn't make a lot of sense to put the buttons for the sounds and the lights on the trigger. So instead, I'm gonna move them up here where your hand would sit when you hold it. That way you can just easily press buttons up in this section and you can still fake it with your finger on the trigger. I didn't do anything fancy with the paint here. I used a really dark gray, it's almost black, but it's also metallic, so it has a nice little shine to it. And while that was drying, I moved all of the electronics to the perf board. I printed out a really simple diffuser to put at the end of the barrel, and this was made with some transparent filament. It's just a disc that fits right up against the end and this will diffuse the LEDs so they're not quite so harsh. Then I just had to stick the LEDs up right behind the diffuser. This was actually a lot more difficult than I thought and I ended up having to take the diffuser out, put the LEDs in from the end, and then put the diffuser back in. It ended up looking really cool. It took a little bit, but I finally got the LEDs mounted in the front of this, and the next thing to mount are the buttons. And for this, we're gonna drill a couple of really tiny holes and hot glue them from the backside and then probably put some sort of tiny little piece on the front that you can just barely tap and it just barely sticks through the surface. I'm kind of making it up as I go along, but I think it's gonna work. I poked a little indention in the surface so that the drill bit wouldn't wander around. I didn't want it to scratch up the paint. I drilled those holes so they were just big enough for the button to fit through, and then I cut down a couple of pieces of 3D printing filament. I glued those to the end of the buttons and stuck them through. This worked out way better than I expected. I did have one little problem, and it's just a word of warning for you. If you do this, make sure that you don't drip any extra glue onto the button itself, because it will glue in place and not work anymore. That goes for the CA glue and for the hot glue. I used hot glue to hold all the pieces in. This is non-permanent, so if I need to take any of this out, it's really not that hard to do. I went back and forth on whether I should leave this solid black, like it was just a blown up version of a small plastic toy, or if I should weather it and make it look used. Of course, I decided to weather it, and to do this, I just dry brushed a lot of the details with some silver paint.
This is awesome. This is really awesome. The eight-year-old me is super excited right now, for sure. This thing is awesome. I'm really happy with how it turned out, and I'm really glad that I switched gears because the other one would not have ended up looking this accurate. If you like this project and you like Transformers, you may also like the Matrix of Leadership that I made a while back, and that will be right there. I've also got a lot of other videos you may want to check out, and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. We're still gonna work on a piece of PVC. We're still gonna work on a piece of PVC pipe. We're still gonna work on a PVC.